Hi everyone, this is a ManifestWell.com interview. I'm your host Jim and today we have with us Julianne Taylor who is a highly qualified consultant in advanced hypnotherapy from Edinburgh, Scotland. She's a lecturer in self-hypnosis, peak performance, stress management and is taught throughout the UK and the US. Uh, she provides complete hypnotherapy and counseling service to private clients dealing with various conditions including anxiety, stress, depression, alcohol, drug abuse, weight control, public speaking, as well as numerous other problems. Uh, she works with corporate clients to help employees increase their sales performance and motivation, and she also teaches effective stress management techniques. So we're very excited to have her with us. We're going to be talking about a lot of cool stuff. Uh, Julianne's extensive training includes some some really neat things, uh, which we're going to talk about, including hypnosis regression techniques, past life regression, uh, neurolinguistic programming, which is NLP, um, energy techniques, as well as Reiki and more. So let's get right into this. So first of all, let's let's talk about hypnosis. What exactly is hypnosis in, in layman's terms? Okay. Really simply, it's a tool that you use to access the subconscious. Basically, if you think about the brain, we all go around and we know what the conscious is. Mm -hmm. So most of us, you know, we do all our analyzing with our conscious mind. You know, we do all our daily business with the conscious mind. Um, but everything going on behind that is being run by the subconscious. And the best way I describe it to people is imagine a computer. Now, I'm not really computer literate particularly, but, you know, imagine a hard drive. It runs programs, doesn't it? And it runs those mm -hmm. in the background. You don't normally see them. That's yeah. a little bit like the subconscious part of the brain. It's running in the background. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it runs all of these programs. And that's how the subconscious works. And we don't really have anything to do with it. You know, we go along in our own own little merry world and the subconscious just gets on with you know running all the sort of the bodily stuff and all the other stuff mm -hmm. hypnosis allows you to actually access the subconscious part of the mind so it actually allows you to bypass the conscious bit and go directly to the subconscious and it does it in a very gentle very natural way um, by basically using um, it's like a t it feels like a relaxation technique I and mean, mm -hmm. it's not actually relaxation but the sensation the actual feeling will be one of very deep relaxation um, it's actually some people call it trance um, I don't tend to use that word because of all the connotations with trance but basically it's a state where you are in um, you are still aware you're still awake you're still very much you know you can hear things going on around you but it is an altered state. Mm -hmm. and people who do very deep meditation will understand the sensation because it's very like hypnosis. So it's a state that you will go into where we can then bypass that conscious bit and actually go into the subconscious and actually get to the root of problems um, because that's usually where the problems are actually sitting. Um, so, the actual, so it's really just a tool. All it is is a very, very easy tool that we use to deal with particularly deep-rooted problems. I see. And, you know, hypnosis sometimes it has a little bit of a stigma, you know, maybe yep. from maybe from Hollywood, you know, you, you have the, yep. the doctor, you know, swinging mm -hmm. the, the clock. Yep. In front. The, the, yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> but it's, it's not like that at all, is it? It's like you no. said, it's, it's just a tool. Correct. It is. I mean, over here we've got people like, you know, the stage shows that we've got with all the hypnosis. And most mm -hmm. people, well, clients that come to me, their first question really is that they tend to be frightened. They want to know that they're not going to be made to do something stupid. Mm -hmm. Because over here we've got hypnosis stage shows where, you know, volunteers go down onto the stage, they're, they're helped into hypnosis, and then they're made to do really stupid things. Mm -hmm. So that's most people's perception of hypnosis. So what I try and do is explain to people how that works. Yes, it is hypnosis, but if you go to one of these stage shows, you sort of know what you're going to go and see. Mm -hmm. You know that you, they're going to ask for volunteers, they're going to go onto the stage and then do really stupid things. Mm -hmm. So you go to the stage show. If you then put up your hand and say, yes, I want to volunteer, you've then given your permission. So you've actually given your permission that you want to allow this to happen to you because hypnosis is, is very, very safe because you can only use hypnosis if that person allows you to. You cannot actually use hypnosis with anyone who doesn't want to go into hyp hypnosis. It's, it, it just can't happen. Yeah. So if I, if I went to a stage show 
I could go and sit on that stage and there is nothing that they could do because I don't want to behave like that. So <laughs> it wouldn't work. So they wouldn't want me as a volunteer because I don't want to do that. Uh -huh. So it's always under the client's control. They choose to allow it to happen. Basically, that... all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was, that was kind of leading into my next question. I, I was going to ask, who is in control? And you just answered that. The client well. every time absolutely the client is always in control they if they feel uncomfortable if they feel unsafe all they ever have to do is open their eyes and get up and walk out there mm -hmm. is there is no control issue um, obviously that doesn't happen because you've built up empathy and rapport with that person and the things that I'm saying to that client are all in line with what they want. So if somebody's coming to me for weight loss, I'm talking about food, I'm talking about exercise. If I then suddenly say, and now I want you to write me a check for 3,000 know, pounds, <laughs> immediately they're gonna open their eyes and go, what? You know, because you know, the brain's gonna go, that doesn't fit with losing weight. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, you know, there is always a fail safe there. Um, that, that it's always under the client's control. There is, it's an absolute fallacy to think that you can actually control somebody using hypnosis. It's not possible. And it's also, you know, people talk about, well, can you make somebody do something within hypnosis? Um, and the best way to describe it is if somebody's had a couple of drinks, you know, some alcohol, they perhaps would be slightly... Um, well, a little bit uninhibited. Mm -hmm. They might do things that they wouldn't normally do, but again, they still wouldn't do certain things. It's the same with hypnosis. They might be a little more uninhibited, but they will never do something that, that they naturally wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. So there's always, again, that fail-safe that they're always in control. So you couldn't actually make somebody go out and murder another person unless actually deep <laughs> down they, yeah, unless they wanted. But there are people, the clients that come and say, well, wait, you know, could you make me do this? Um, and it is one of those things, unless that person actually wants to go and do that, <laughs> which hopefully they don't. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's one of those things that it has to be within the realms of what that client wants. So you cannot make somebody do something that they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just not possible because you're working within their, their, their subconscious. Um, so you will only work with, with what they need, they need to get from it. Okay. And... It, as far as the subconscious mind goes, this is what you're you're really accessing now. Yes. What's in control of our of our daily lives? I mean, we're when when we're awake and we're going through our day, we're conscious, but we have, like you said, there's this whole subconscious. It's almost yep. like there are programs running, and it's we don't exactly. always we don't yeah. always realize that. Can what's exactly going on here? Who's who's in control? You know, your mind, your subconscious mind, or both. It's a combination. It has to be. If you think about it, do you think about breathing? I mean, yeah, obviously sometimes you think about <laughs> breathing, but in general, you don't. Do you think about making your heart beat? Do you think about swallowing? Do you think about blinking your eyes? You know, all of these functions we don't consciously have anything to do with. And actually, if I tell you now to sit and concentrate on swallowing, I will guarantee you it will start to go slightly wrong. You'll do a gulp or it will go slightly wrong. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you consciously think about it, it goes slightly wrong. So if you think about your everyday life, it's a combination of conscious and subconscious. Your subconscious is in the background and it's running all of your bodily functions. It's doing all of your digestion. It's keeping your body at the right temperature. Um, so all of the really sort of the physical things, it's controlling. Mm -hmm. um, also, the subconscious is also a bit like a memory storage area. It's like a huge warehouse. Everything that you've done, you've thought, you've seen, you've felt, you've smelt is actually stored within the subconscious. Okay. The, tests that, the tests that they've done, they realize that you can only consciously hold on to a maximum of about seven things at one time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a variation on that, but an average of about seven things everything else basically just gets thrown back into the subconscious so you've got this huge warehouse where all of your memories and all of your emotions are stored and then when you need them basically the conscious just whizzes in accesses it and pulls it through into the conscious mind so the two work absolutely completely conjoined they're absolutely joined together and one can't really exist without the other fascinating and one of the very interesting things is we we do have 
problems or, 